I thought today we might do something a little bit out of the ordinary. At least it's out of the ordinary compared to what I typically do in the shop. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. I have had this cut off piece of an oxygen cylinder laying around for years. And it's just one of those things that's kind of underfoot, kind of gets in the way. I always thought I would make a bell out of it. So today, let's convert this into a bell. Now there's not gonna be a lot of forging, but there will be some internal parts and a hanging ring that we will need to forge. But I think the main assembly to attach all of this is gonna probably be electrically welded. I think that's just the best way to do that with this. But we can forge the parts, we can make a nice ring, do a few things like that. So to do that, I think I am going to start with a piece of half by one, it's uh, 13 by 25 millimeter. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to draw out a bit of a stem that will come through the hole from the inside and make the upper ring to hang this from. What's left, I'm going to upset a little bit to make it a little bit thicker, a little more mass, punch a hole in it, draw it out into a ring, and that's what will hold the clapper on the inside. Now for the clapper, I think I'm going to start with a piece of 5 8 round bar. I'll draw at the end to make a loop that will go in the ring from the other piece. And then I think down where it crosses about in this area, I'm going to try and make a collar out of this piece of 3 quarter by 1 inch material. So it's going to be a great big collar, a heavy weight on here. We'll wrap it around, forge weld it. Hopefully that's going to work out well. And that's what will actually ring the bell. And maybe on the other end of the the clapper's arm, we'll put another hole that we can put a cord through so we can grab it and swing that around. Hopefully that all makes sense and hopefully it works and hopefully it sounds good. Now this is going to be a bit of a power hammer intensive project. There's some big drawing out that I'm going to do here and I'm just going to go ahead and get this done and go ahead and get this project finished instead of dragging it out. So hopefully you don't mind watching me work under the power hammer. I'll still try to explain what I'm doing. And of course, you can find a way to do every single one of these steps by hand if you need to, maybe just with different choices of material. Set this down in the Pritchell hole here. Just going to start knocking the corners off of this so it's easier to round up after I punch the hole.
And this is all certainly bigger than it probably has to be. You could probably do all this out of 3 8 round bar. But this just lets me use different techniques. I've seen lots of bells done this way, but I've never seen what they look like on the inside. So I'm not sure how other people are doing this. Plug. And we'll start to drift that out. I want fairly big to make sure nothing hangs up so the clapper can swing freely. It's going to take a fair amount of back and forth to get the ring I want, but I think we'll be able to do that. That's as far as I can drive that punch in without getting it stuck in the Pritchell hole. So I can do that from the backside one more time, then we'll be ready to go over the horn of the anvil. this evenly you're trying to draw it out to a consistent thickness and that will probably require working from both sides a little thick in this dimension so I'm going to draw that out some and then redrift it. I think we need a bigger drift. That's pretty much the ring that will hold the clapper, and it's completed. But I don't want that thick for the, the hanging hook. So I'm going to go back under the power hammer. I'll leave to about here so it fits inside the neck of the bottle. Then draw this out into something we'll later make the uh, hook to hang it from out of. You could easily turn that into some kind of an eye bolt or something, but this part will become the hook on the top of the cylinder. This will all be hidden in the cylinder and I'll electrically weld wherever that joint is on the outside, just because I think it will be the most expedient 
and it will solidly bond everything to guarantee that it rings as well as it possibly can. Next, I want to roll this up into a ring, which is not going to be easy, but we're going to find a way to do it. And then I will forge weld that to that 5 8 round bar. So somehow I got to roll it up around here. Never tried to make a collar this fat before. I didn't have any material large enough to just drill a hole through it and get what I was after. Oh, I suppose I could have upset something. Hope I'm close and go ahead and cut this off. Okay, let's see if we get this to drive in there well enough, and then I'll break that off. Now my hope is that that will actually come together. up to welding heat that will slowly draw out more so I'll lose a little mass but I think we'll end up with a good good clapper inside the bell but even if it doesn't weld up perfectly it will still do the job as long as it welds to the bar so it doesn't fall off. Now to keep this at a good welding heat, I'm going to turn the forge way up. I run this about 25 PSI to weld. And I'm going to leave it on while I'm at the anvil. So it's going to be a little bit louder in here. And I probably won't do any narrating while I'm doing the weld.
something else I need are a couple of rings, or at least one ring. I don't know if I'll need both or not. To do that, I'm just going to roll this up into kind of a spring shape. And here in a second, we'll get a drift back out. Make sure it's round. I actually didn't want to tuck that end in. Let's go ahead and drift it. Now you can put a pin in a vise, and that's probably a little bit easier. That if you don't have the pin for the vise, you can do it this way. This is really way easier to do in the vise. I should have just, just done it that way, but I wanted to show that it can be done at the anvil. That gives me enough material to make two round rings out of. And I'll show you what those are for in just a minute. This one doesn't need to pivot freely. This is just a place to tie a, a rope or something. Try to get the ring round again. That's really all that needs. The other ring though I want to put between these two pieces. This will be a little bit fiddlier. But I think we can do it. Again, the first thing we got to do is open it up so we can get it through there. I hope we can get it closed up before it cools off too much. Okay, and that way this uh, clapper can swing in any direction it needs to inside the belt. I don't know if I can successfully do this or not, but we're going to try to run that through. camera out of my way. Oh, something's hanging up there. That's not good. We may not get that hook shaped this way. Yep, there we go. Clapper was stuck on the outside of the bell. Wouldn't do any good there anyways. Some heat left there. 
Probably I'm going to have to go to a torch to finish this, I think. Yeah. That was an idea, but it's not solid enough in there to do that. But once we weld this, and I'm going to go just do an electric weld, just use the MIG welder on that, and we should be in pretty good shape. Well, I'm a little surprised I got away with that, but it worked pretty well. Kind of the hook of the week? Probably not. Let that cool. And you can see what it sounds like. Well, I think it works. I am perfectly satisfied with the way that bell sounds, and I'm pretty happy with the way everything went today. It's a little bit crude. It's a little bit fly by the seat of your pants. I think for a lot of this style of cylinder bell, people just bend stuff up cold and weld it together, probably don't put anywhere near that much work in. And I don't know that it sounds any better because of that. It just gave me an excuse to do some of those things and to show some other techniques that maybe we haven't looked at. Making that big collar was probably serious overkill, and I don't know if I would do that again. I might find some other way to create a nice clapper. But it works, and it's going to sound just fine. And even better yet, it gets it off the floor of the shop, and I'm going to go hang it outside somewhere. I may have to build a stand for it, or maybe I can hang it from a tree. But one way or the other, I don't have to work around it anymore. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. Then I do hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. Wash your hands as often as you possibly can. Stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.